so the last session we started with Lyapunov direct method and in to understand Lyapunov stability we need to basically satisfy three important conditions uh, the energy function the Lyapunov function should be continuous it should it should have a continuous first order derivative uh, the Lyapunov function should be greater than zero for all x's except for x not equal to zero and uh, the derivative of the Lyapunov function should be less than zero. Now to derive the energy Lyapunov function, we can use different methods. One is the energy approximate method, the Kravoskis method, and the variable gradient method. So one we, uh, method we have derived for how to basically find out the Lyapunov function using two positive different matrices P and Q. So moving on, uh, the, the variable gradient method. So, uh, assume you have uh, Lyapunov function and its gradient that is uh, delta v. Fine. So, you have this Lyapunov function v. Assume its gradient uh, from delta v. What we do is basically we derive v dot and the differential term constrain v dot to be negative definite or uh, at least semi negative definite use the curl equation to determine the remaining coefficients of gradient V. <clears throat> uh, quickly recheck this derivative v delta for negative definite whether it's negative definite or not We do this because the additional terms uh, required the other steps that just we have mentioned may alter actually V and therefore V delta may change. So uh, <clears throat> to find out the uh, we we are actually how to basically generate v this is not time to check stability to check stability we need to go back to the uh, basic three conditions how to generate v using the variable gradient method uh, these are the steps that we follow uh, we assume uh, gradient function of v uh, and from v that from that gradient function we derive v dot and we constrain this v dot to be negative definite or at least semi negative definite that means at least it should be zero at most and using the curl equation we need to determine the coefficients of delta v uh, we need to check this again we will constrain this within a negative definite uh, keep it negative definite uh, as the above equations may or may not may alter the 
definiteness of this <coughs> particular system. So let's take an example uh, to see this. So consider the following system. x1 equal to minus 6 x1 divided by 1 plus x1 square square plus 2x2 this is x1 dot and x2 dot this is your system is minus 2x1 minus 2x2 divided by 1 plus x1 square x1 square uh, square right? x1 square so you have x1 dot x2 dot determine the stability of the equilibrium point of this system fine right? so equilibrium point as the original uh, or has original as equilibrium point we need to determine the stability of the system for that we need to actually have the energy function of the Lyapunov function of the system so uh, Assuming as the first step in the variable gradient method, assume delta v that the gradient of this function equal to delta v1, delta v2. Uh, since it's a second order system, a11 x1 plus a12 x2, a21 x1. A22 x2. We need to actually find out these coefficients a11, a12, a21, a22 uh, to be able to tell what the energy function will be. So v dot is given by delta v transpose into x dot that is a11 x1 plus a12 x2. A21 x1 plus A22 x2 is the, is the transpose of this function into x dot that's x1 dot x2 dot fine uh, that is A11 x1 plus A12 x2 A21 x1 plus A22 x2 Substituting the values of x1 dot and x2 dot minus 6 x1 divided by 1 plus x1 square plus 2 x1 minus 2 x1 minus 2 x2 divided by 1 plus x1 square square. Fine. Uh, so this becomes minus 6 a11 x1 square divided by 6 a11 x1 square divided by 1 plus x1 square square plus 2 a12 2 a12 x1 square 2 2 a1 2x this is a11 minus minus uh, this becomes minus 6 a11 x1 square where we want this x1 square square plus A11 x1 square plus A12 minus 6 rather minus 6 A12 x1 x2 divided by 1 plus x1 square plus 2 a12 x1 x2 
point and minus uh, is the first term minus a to one minus two a to one x one square uh, minus two a to one one x two uh, one minute one minute one minute this is x two here x two a so this is This is minus six a one one x one squared by one plus x one square square plus two a one one x one x two minus six a one two x one x two plus two a one two x two square. Fine. Similarly, at the bottom we have minus two a two one x one square uh, minus two a two one. Eight minus two a two one x one x two x one x two divided by one plus x one square square and uh, minus two a two two minus two a two two x one x two minus two a two two x one x two that's x two Square divided by one plus x one square square. Fine. So this is your v dot. Uh, now step number three, we need to constrain v dot such that it is less than zero, and uh, that means we need to actually fix the values of a one one, a two one, a two two, a two a one, a two one. So that this whole term is at least negative semi-definite. That means it is at most equal to zero, or less less than or equal to zero. Uh, so if we look at this term and uh, substitute this equal to zero, we can get we can uh, find out the coefficients at which we have. Will be at least less than or equal to zero. So a one two a two one will be given uh, will be equal to zero, and a one one will be equal to two. Therefore, uh, v dot will be equal to minus twelve. Um, A one two is equal to a two one is equal to zero and a one one is equal to two is equal to a two two. Fine. So if you see, if you go back to this, uh, this x one there is x one square in this term, in the first term. If you see, there is x one square. So it will always be positive for any value of x one, whether it's positive or negative. So this as a whole will be negative for all values of a one one greater than zero. Fine. And uh, uh, this can be either positive or negative. So accordingly, this may or may not be positive. So we take a one two equal to zero. Similarly, this can be positive. This can be negative. Uh, so we take a two one equal to zero. So if we take a one one and a two two same, fine. A one one and a two two will be having the same values. So this term and this term will cancel out. So we'll be left with uh, one this term and two will be left with this term minus two a two two x two square divided by one plus x one square out square. Fine. So using any values of uh, a one two a two one equal to zero, we can take a one one and a two two equal to two, and b dot in that case will be equal to minus two x one square divided by one plus x one square square minus. Over x two square divided by one plus x one square 
whole scale fine so this is your v dot you need to now find out the curl of the system therefore v is equal to 0 to x delta v transpose dx that means v will be equal to 0 to x1 delta v dx1 plus 0 to x2 delta v dx2 so differentiating with respect to x1 and x2 uh, so integrating with respect to x1 and x2 so if you integrate delta v uh, transpose with respect to x1 and x2 you will be getting 0 to x1 to x1 dx1 plus 0 to x2 uh, 2x2 dx2 delta where delta v is a11 x1 plus a12 x2 that means it's delta v1 is 2x1 delta v2 is 2x2 going back to deltas delta v is delta v1 is a11 x1 that means 2x1 delta v2 is 2x2 2x2 uh, these a12 and a21 we have assumed that to be 0 so integrating them uh, you'll be getting x1 square divided by 2 so this becomes x1 square and then applying the limits we get x1 square plus x2 square so this is positive definite for all values of x not equal to 0 uh, And we have seen v dot is negative definite in this case, and therefore this equilibrium point is globally asymptotic. Okay, fine. So we have chosen a function b. Uh, first, you apply the gradient, and then you have, to, uh, and then you apply the curl to get back the energy function. This is your energy function now in this case. So looking at this energy function, you can see. Uh, this will be positive definite for all values of x and corresponding to this basically v dot uh, that's actually that we already found out minus 12 x1 square divided by 1 plus x1 square whole square minus 4 x2 that we have chosen appropriately that is less than 0 so this is so it satisfies both conditions for stability and therefore this equilibrium point is stable fine <coughs> So this is the variable gradient method how we can basically use the variable gradient method to find out the uh, energy function.